Good afternoon, guys. It's working, bringing you a quick update on Bitcoin. Hope you guys are having a wonderful afternoon. Uh, we're looking at Bitcoin to the U.S. dollars, the four-hour chart on Coinbase. Oh, and before I get started, guys, I want to thank everybody that uh, did comment yesterday. I left a brief, by the way, if you guys aren't uh, aren't following my channel, uh, not just on, obviously, on videos you're following the channel, but also on the community section over here, guys. Sometimes if I don't post, I'll post a little update here telling you why I'm not posting. And I know a lot of you commented. I haven't gotten back to all of you, but a lot of you um, commented. Um, I just said yesterday I was dealing with some family issues. And yeah, we just had a couple family issues going on, guys, um, actually traveling with some relatives. So it's... Uh, Anyway, it, was just, it wasn't anything serious at all, but I do appreciate all of your well wishes and everything, guys. really meant a lot, um, so thank you for that, um, by the way. And also, just a reminder, guys, when I don't publish, you can always sometimes look for in the comments section of the YouTube channel, and that's where I'll publish some uh, potentially some updates if and when I can. All right, looking at Bitcoin to the U.S. dollar four-hour chart on Coinbase. Last time we spoke, guys, Bitcoin, actually, I don't remember exactly where it was last time, but yesterday when we spoke, Bitcoin was back above 12 uh, or 9,400 here. And I did tell you in that comment section yesterday, I wrote uh, that I was looking for a short, possible short term move back up to 9.7 to 10,000. Of course, we are seeing that now. Price did coming up, actually reaching as high as about 10,030 before getting rejected here, actually finding some resistance right at our $9,950 support. More importantly, what I'm watching is I still do believe that this ascending support line that was support for so long, going all the way back to May the 10th, um, which where we have this anchored, of course, that we did break down below on Ju July the 17th. And then this support line started acting as resistance, whereas resistance on July the 29th, resistance again on, well, July the 29th, and resistance again, again on the 30th, resistance again earlier today on the 31st. And then we broke above, anytime you see, anytime you break Break a major support or resistance, usually it's broken decisively. In other words, it just kind of breaks up. It doesn't just kind of slowly tick above. It just breaks out. And that's what we saw here. Um, so that tells me that this is, and if I zoom in here, you can kind of see that. That tells me that this line is still relevant. It was support acted as resistance and it tells me this is the, the fact that we just broke above it so fast so decisively not well decisively is not the right term because we haven't had a four hour open and close but so powerfully i guess i should say um that i want to start see this start acting as support in other words i want to see a retest of this and oftentimes a very strong support or resistance does get retested once it's broken out of so i want to see a retest of this and i want to see it start acting as support if it comes back down and it just kind of disregards this this, then I'm going to look at this as all just probably a lot of just pure manipulation and then maybe continuation to the downside here. We'll have to wait and see how this plays out. We certainly have a very relevant zone right here at about $10,150. That was the area of support back here on July the 19th, acted as support again on July the 22nd, July the 23rd, July the 25th, July the 27th. And of course, as of right now, we haven't quite made it up there, but let's see if it starts acting as resistance again. Um, so, excuse me, it was support turning into resistance on those prior dates. Let's see if it starts acting as resistance again. Um, so it'll be very interesting to see if we can get a decisive break above this. If we can, if we get a decisive four hour open and close, then yes, I'm gonna be looking for targets much higher, very likely at least 10,400, very likely 10,650. And it's not until we break 10,650 that I'll feel more comfortable picking targets to the upside. At that point, I'll start looking at, once we get a decisive break above 10,650, I'm looking at a 11,050 for a scalp. Uh, once we get a decisive break above 1150, I'm looking for 11,500 to scalp. Once we get a decisive break above 11,500, I'm very likely going to look at about 12,000, which I don't have I don't have marked off here yet, but let me just go ahead and get that marked off because it is indeed a relevant zone right around here, right around 12,000 ish, just shy of that certainly is relevant. And then of course we have 12,400 above that. It's not until we break above 12,400 that I will believe that we have finally gotten out of this overall massive consolidation pattern that we've been in basically since we put in our high on June the 26th. When we break above 12,400 decisively, I will start to believe that we're above that or that we've finally broken out of that consolidation by decisive at this point, I mean a daily open and close above 12,400. Then I'm going to be looking for targets um, at least 13,000, obviously, but I do think more than likely we take a shot at this $13,850 high, and I do think we have a good shot at breaking it. But we got a lot of work. Bitcoin has a lot of work to do in between now and then. Now, I'm not forgetting what we've talked about, guys, which is that, of course, 
our, our main target down here between 9, 000, or 8,900 and 8,500 that everybody and their brother has been watching, guys. And we've been talking about the psychology of this for some time. We've been talking about how because if everybody's watching it, then nobody thinks it's going to happen because everybody's trying to outsmart the market now, right? And so if nobody thinks it's going to happen, then it very likely will happen. And as I discussed on either my last video or the video prior to that, I was discussing how everybody was now talking about that. We had been talking about that kind of you know, continuing down the rabbit hole of psychology. If everyone's talking about it, then it won't happen. But if no one thinks it's going to happen, then maybe it will happen. And then we talked about, but now everyone's talking about, because everyone's talking about no one's going to happen, that it won't. So, you know, then of course, maybe it, maybe it actually won't happen. And that's where we left it last time. Um, even though my bias was still down here at 9,000, um, or excuse me, at 8,900 and, uh, uh, 9,900 to 8,500 and uh, 8,500, 8,900, I should say. Sorry, guys. I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. Um, even though that was my bias, guys, as soon as we take out 6,650, you know, that bias is very, in the, at least in the medium term, is going to shift. Um, so I, I just want to be very, very clear on that. You know, this could all be a, a bull trap without question. I mean, this is this is frustrating both the bulls and the bears with this, guys. This really, really, really is. Um, we've been trying to draw out and try to make sense of this pattern for quite some time. You know, we've been talking about, you know, this potentially being a falling wedge here, especially on the daily let me just go ahead and mark that out. We're looking at this as a potential falling wedge. No longer think that really is think. I no longer think that think that that works um, at all, at least as a falling wedge in this sense, in, in the in the sense that we've been uh, that we've been discussing. Now, there are other people that have been talking about and rightfully so. Let me go ahead and get rid of this. There are other people that are talking about looking at this as a potential descending triangle, you know, and I think it works better this way. Let's uh, let me just get right on it here. There we go. And I think they were looking at this as a potential descending triangle. And let me just go ahead and draw that out. There you go. You guys can see it a little bit better. Looking at this, you know, potentially as a descending triangle. And if that's the case, we have broken to the upside, which remember, guys, a descending triangle, yes, the majority of time it breaks bare. The majority of time it breaks down. But remember, it... That the majority of time that is taking into account a descending triangle in uh, just overall. You know, it doesn't matter if if it's a bullish or bearish market. Just a descending triangle, majority of time breaks down to the downside. If you start breaking it apart and you start actually looking at a descending triangle in a bear market, even though yes, the majority majority of time it breaks down, that majority comes becomes much much greater in a bear market. That majority becomes much less in a bull market. And if in fact we we've obviously been in a massive up uptrend, I believe that is a bull market. And if in fact we are in a bull market, then the potential for a descending triangle to break break down, I, I, I somebody's going to have to correct me on this because I, I know it's much less. In other words, there, there's a greater percentage of it to break up. I just don't remember exactly where the percentage is. It's something like a 55 in a bull market for a descending triangle to break down. It's like a 55 to 65 percent chance, 55 to 60 percent chance of breaking down, um, which means, of course, you would have a uh, 40 to 45 percent chance of breaking up, um, something like that, something like that. Um, I can't remember exactly what it is. The bottom line is, you know, there were there was a a decent chance that price could break up, even though we were painting a descending triangle, and even more so because we were. It looked like we were in a bull market. Certainly in an uptrend, I believe we were in a bull market. So it's not going to be unheard of if this was a descending triangle for price to break up. That being said, it's also not unheard of that this could be a bull trap, and we've not yet taken out price points to where you can't rule that out. In fact, I would say I would say 10,650 if we can get a decisive break above that, then I would start to roll that out as a potential bull trap. But even if, you know, the the most logical place for this thing to end up reversing course would be right here between about 10,100 and 50 and 10,200, somewhere in this neighborhood, you know, potentially reversing course and then just dropping. The bottom line is we, we are not breaking up on very much volume. So I don't have a lot of conviction on this breakup yet. It doesn't mean it can't change. It certainly can. But as of right now, we're not breaking out on very much volume. And if I refresh our volume here, uh, let me just get overall daily volume. We're only setting at a 
15.7 billion. That's over. Uh, that's really comparatively. I mean, if we go back just a few months, we were sitting at basically about 30 billion. You know, on average, we were at 29, 31, 30, 25, 28. You know, 23. Then jumping back up to 33, 28. You can, I mean, you can you can see where we were somewhere on average, probably 25, 30 billion for about a month's time there. And then we just started dropping off. Then we just went from 25 to 20 to 17 to 16, 17 to 15 to 14 to 16 to 13 to 13 to 13. And now today we're sitting at about 15. Still not very much volume compared to where we were. You know, we were literally at more than double this volume at the peak of this run. So my point in all this is people are still sitting on the sidelines waiting to see how this shakes out. And if we look at longs and shorts, we can see shorts are flat. Longs are for the most part flat, dropping off a little bit, but nothing to substan no real substantial change here. So it tells me that a lot of people are still sitting on the sidelines waiting, which tells me to be very, very careful. Anytime volume is very low, it's very ripe for manipulation. So be very, very careful with this move. That being said, come zooming in on the four hour, we can see that we had the 821 and 55 day EMA all converging here as well as the, bottle, the Bollinger Bands bottleneck, that always suggests a larger move. And again, larger is relative to the time scale we're looking at. We're looking at a four hour time scale. So larger is not necessarily, you know, large is not necessarily a massive move, you know, just maybe a few hundred dollar move, which actually since the this bottom here at 9,100, you know, we have moved about eight, nine hundred dollars. In fact, even if you just want to use the bottom here about uh, 9,350, 9, you know, currently sitting at about uh, 9,075 ish somewhere thereabouts so you know still about a six seven hundred dollar move so you know that 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 isn't unreasonable to see what we but we are not seeing the volume to follow through as of yet so let's wait and see kind of how this ends up playing out for right now um, on the four hour I need to see at least us break up above the 200 simple and that's sitting up here at about uh, ten thousand seven hundred and fifty ish which coincides nicely with this ten thousand six hundred and fifty dollar zone um, you know roughly you know give or take so yeah Yes, if we can break above decisively on the four hour above this 200 simple, yes, I'll start getting midterm very, very bullish. I still won't be large long term bullish. I'll, I'll be more long term or, or excuse me, long term. I am bullish. I should say. I guess I should. Yeah, I guess it depends on how I how I how I uh, um, describe it. In other words, I, I, I'm not going to say the correction is over, but yes, I will start picking targets to the upside if we can get a decisive break above the 200 day EMA over uh, the 200 simple. Excuse me, the 200 simple. Until then, I'm very, very skeptical of this move until we get it backed by a whole lot of volume here. That being said, we are seeing, well, I mean, the, the moving averages and exponential moving averages are basically right on top of one another, so I'm not going to try to read that there on the four hour. Let's look at the daily, though. Looking at the daily, we are still below the 21 day EMA. You know, it does look like we want to test it here. If we can, of course, get a day, did a decisive break above the 21 day EMA, you guys know how much emphasis I put on the 21 day EMA. Once we got that decisive break below it, again, by decisive, I mean not just just a close, not just an open, but an open and close below the 21 day EMA. We got that signal on July the 15th. That's when we got that open and close. And of course, we saw how that ended up playing out. That was a pretty good signal. If we can get that signal again to the upside here, not just a break above the 21 day EMA, but both an open and a close above the 21 day EMA, that may in fact signal a trend shift. Um, and we may, and then of course, we may, we may have seen the end of the correction, but it's not until I see a daily candle handle open and close above the 21 day EMA that I start to think that this trend will continue. Even though I am macro bullish still, I'm still macro bullish. You know, the correct, I'm not going to start declaring the end of this correction until, or start thinking the correction is over until we at least see an open and close above that 21 day EMA. That being said, we are starting to see the eight day EMA starting to look like it wants to cross above the 50. That is bullish. We has, as of right now, we have averted the 21 day crossing below the 55. As of right now, that is, that is also bullish. If this thing does end up being a trap and we do fall down here and that 21 crosses below the 55, then of course that I'm going to be start looking at the immediately watching that area between 85 and 8,900. Again, that will certainly become a target. As of right now, we are still seeing the 821 and 55 day EMA all start conver all converging here. We are also starting to see on the daily, the, uh, the daily Bollinger Bands start to converge. That is indicative of a much larger move to come. If this does continue, if we kind of go sideways here and that does continue in that, uh, in that vein. So let's watch and see how this plays out. Looking at the weekly, we've discussed this as well. We did last weekly's candle was the first weekly candle that we broke that we closed below the eight week EMA since we've had this bull run here. Uh, since the bull run basically started 
all the way right here on February the 25th. Um, this was the first time we've closed below the 21-day EMA since prior to February the 25th. I also told you that in the overall trend, so in, a, in other words, in an, in, a, in an uptrend like we have been here, anytime we break below and close below the eight-day EMA, that usually is the beginning of the end of the correction. So now it doesn't mean that we can't go lower, and oftentimes we do go lower. So, I mean, it doesn't mean that we can't have this weekly candle also close below the eight-week EMA, even coming down here and testing the 21-day EMA as low as about that 10,000, uh, the mid-8,000, let's call it, because if we get another week that goes by, this will just continue to go higher. So the mid mid 8,000 ish somewhere thereabouts guys give or take um, so that it, it doesn't mean that but it does mean that I do believe the beginning of the end of the correction has likely started if history is any guide we saw that just going back in history here um, again it, it depends on the trend but if you if as I showed you guys before and I don't mean to bore you guys I know I've, I, I've showed some of you but for the new viewers out there if the overall trend is bearish in other words looking at the bear market of 2018 the overall trend is down which I don't think anyone would argue with that every Every time that we'd had a quote unquote correction, which a correction in a bear market would be to the upside, right? So every time we had a quote unquote correction, it signified once we had the daily candle closing, abo closing above the eight week EMA, or excuse me, the weekly candle closing above the eight-week EMA, that signaled the end of the correction and then price continued down. So in other words, right here, for example, we had the eight-week candle on August the 27th, closed above the eight-week EMA. That was the beginning of the end. The following week also closed above the eight-week EMA, um, or excuse me, um, um, actually, it didn't close above the eight-week EMA. It actually closed there. But we can see the following week, the downtrend, the downtrend continued. So that signaled the 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 end, the beginning of the end of the correction, quote unquote. Of course, we saw it here too on July the twenty-third. The eight-week EMA or the eight the eight. Uh, um, Eight, the the candle the the weekly candle closed above the eight week EMA signaling the end of the upside correction and then continuation to the downside. Of course, we saw the same thing right here on April the third, and this is a good example showing you that even though we closed above it on April the twenty third, we can still have another week that you know closes above the eight week EMA and even goes a little bit higher in this case, corrects a little bit more, but it's kind of the beginning of the end. And even though in the following week we can still go, we can still correct a little further, you know, usually after that following week, the trend continues to the downside. So we saw it again here. We saw it again here We on February the 26th. So you get the idea. You get the example. And if you go back to the 2017 bull market, the opposite is true. Anytime we close below it, that was the beginning of the end of the correction to the downside and then the overall macro trend to the upside continued. So now we have had a weekly candle close below the eight week EMA. That is the beginning of the end. Even if we see this closing going a little bit lower here, very likely, even if it does go lower, that very likely this next week's candle will likely be one, if not this week, the following week will likely be the end of that correction. And then the overall macro trend will continue to the upside. Now that's just history as any guide, you know, you know patterns are meant to be broken. So it, this, this doesn't mean that this pattern is hundred percent accurate or will always 100% be the case going forward. It's just an example. It's just an idea. It's just one indication of many that does suggest that we are in the beginning of the end of the correction. And we, we may see continuation to the upside here. Let's wait and see kind of how it plays out. Now, looking at the daily here, daily uh, daily MACD uh, is without question painting uh, some bullish divergence, which, which we did point out last time. But of course, price created basically flat here, um, almost a double bottom. Um, but if we look at the MACD, MACD obviously created a higher low. That is bullish overall downtrend. That is bullish divergence. That would suggest you know price continuing to the upside here, at least a little bit in the short term. Now, you could argue that's already played out. We'll have to wait and see. I wouldn't be surprised to see us wick up above here, You know, maybe coming as high as about 10.4. But again, I do think that there's a good chance we get rejected and come right back down. We'll have to wait and see again how this plays out. It's not until we get a daily candle opening and closing above 10,650 that I do start to pick targets to the upside. So I'm still very skeptical of this move until at least we see some um, continuation to the upside on volume. Until we see volume coming in, until we see daily volume well above 20,000 for, for at least two days in a row, I mean 22, 25, Five, you know, or excuse me, billion, twenty-five. <laughs> didn't I say thousand? Twenty-five billion, twenty.
20 to 25 billion on a, at least a two to three day basis. So in other words, in a row, until we see daily volume starting to flood in like that, I'm very, very, very skeptical of this move, guys, because again, anytime his volume is low, it just makes sense that it makes it much easier to manipulate the market. So always remember that, guys. So this, could this all be manipulation? You know, every, I mean, this, this really is kind of underwater chess is, as they like to say, underwater 3D chess, as they like to say, guys, you know, trying to figure out, trying to manipulate the market. If everybody's looking at one thing, you know, sleight of hand, making it do something else, trying to bait people into, in this play, going long, saying the correction is over, and then they just reverse it back over. There's a lot of psychology going on here, guys. There's a lot of uh, um, uh, mental games going on, and that's why you just, you don't need to get caught up in it. It's very simple. Either sit on your, either scalp trade, very small scalps, which if you're comfortable doing that, great, man. You can, you can scalp support and resistance all day long. But if you're not, sit back, wait on your hands until we get decisive moves on volume, and then you'll be able to start picking targets. As of right now, as I said before, until we get this break up above here on volume, I am still going to be looking at um, 85 to 8,900, even though, admittedly, this is starting to look a lot more bullish, but having been having having watched how manipulated this market can be, and then knowing that we aren't seeing the volume follow through yet, I'm very, 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 very skeptical. Doesn't mean this can't be a move. Doesn't mean this can't reverse course. It just means for everybody that was so bearish yesterday, and then all of a sudden are becoming so bullish. It's you know just don't. Don't be that person. Be that person that just trades on logic and has a plan no matter what happens. And if you're not sure what that plan is, you probably shouldn't be trading. Looking at the daily RSI, daily RSI is still looking a little bit weak here, even though it does look like it's wanting to recover. What I need to see on the daily RSI is I need to see us break above about 53 on the daily RSI. Why 53? Because we can see in the past, 53 acted, right, that area acted as strong resistance during the bear market all through here. And then we finally broke up above it. And then what happened? And then 53 started acting as strong support. Now, again, small breaks here and there, but you can see where it started acting as strong support right here all throughout this latest rise um, so and then we broke below it here which really got my attention and of course we're trying to see if we can break back into it and of course finally break back above it so this is again this we are by no means out of the woods I want to be very clear guys we're no by no means out of the woods if and when we we get price or not price if and when we get the daily RSI tra um, trending above 53 on the daily RSI, then I will start to believe that uh, at least that will be why I shouldn't say that. That's not the only thing. That makes it sound like that's the only thing I'm looking at. That will be one more piece of the puzzle indicating that price has, in fact, bottomed out. The correction is over and we are continuing back to the upside. Looking at the weekly chart, weekly chart, obviously from this point here to this point here, we created a higher low, hard to argue with. If we look at the weekly RSI, weekly RSI, I've pointed this out before, but pointing it out again, weekly RSI created a lower low. Obviously, this is in an overall uptrend. Nobody could argue that we are in an overall uptrend there. Of course, we're sitting now looking at the bottom of that RSI. And again, I know for you veteran traders, you know this, please indulge me. There's all levels of traders on here. So I just want to make sure I'm, I'm speaking to everybody. So I try to explain every time I'm pointing out divergence and hidden divergence. I'm trying to explain how I'm coming up with this. So anyway, so looking at the bottom side here, a bottom created a higher low. Looking at the bottom of the weekly RSI, weekly RSI created a lower low. That's clearly divergence. In this case, since the overall trend is up, that's hidden divergence. And in this case, that's hidden bullish divergence. And I pointed this out last week, pointing it out again. And again, this just suggests that yes, price could be bottoming it out. And if and when it does, we you know, could continue back to the upside. But that being said, it's not massive divergence. And it also could suggest price could come lower. Um, but it, it, it does even if price does come lower, it suggests the overall macro trend is still is, is still intact. In other words, we would be showing um, bullish hidden bullish divergence all the way until we broke below um, 65. And if we broke below, say, or excuse me, seven, uh, seven, uh, excuse me, 7,500, I don't know why I got 6,500, 7,500. It's not until we took out 7,500 that that would invalidate that. And to be fair, the, you know, this is not yet valid hidden bullish divergence. We actually have to have this daily candle uh, or excuse me, this weekly candle engulfed the prior week's low. So, you know, I, I want to be very clear. It's not confirmed hidden bullish divergence yet, but it is certainly suggesting hidden bullish divergence. And some of my most profitable trades come from front running based off suggested um, bullish and or bearish divergence. So let's wait and see how this plays out. But it, it's interesting to note that this is certainly suggesting that. 
one more thing that's interesting to point out, guys, it looking at looking at the overall consolidation of this pattern here, usually when you're pulling a fib, you're going from the ultimate low to the ultimate high, right? Um, so if I look at the ultimate low here, I know everybody's been pulling their fib right off of here, and it's not necessarily wrong. You know, it really it really depends on where algos are getting theirs because you're trading against a lot of algos, right? Um, so it depends on where they're pulling theirs from. But as, as just a an interesting point, if you just go back to basic 101, you pull from the overall structure you're looking at, which in this case, the, the, the low from this uptrend here. So the low from this uptrend here was started back here on this wick, which is very, very hard to see. But this wick on the daily chart on May the 17th, the low of the daily candle on May the 17th, that's starting down here. And that's what started this overall uptrend that went all the way up to 13,850. Why am I pointing that out? Because if I use that as my anchor low, which technically is the right thing to do if I'm looking at this, you know, this, uh, this, this latest move, um, what, what, what am I, what, what happens here? Price came down and literally double bottomed right on top of the golden ratio or really the golden pocket because it did wick right below it both times exactly this almost exactly the same both times the body's closing on top of the golden ratio at the 618 and uh, the the wicks going right down to right inside the golden pocket, which is at about six five. Remember that the 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 space between the 618 and the 65 is known as the golden ratio. So technically this couldn't. This is why you have the golden pocket. This is almost a textbook golden pocket bounce both times because you, you have the body closing right at the golden ratio, but the golden pocket is for the quick overthrow, usually by a wick, and that's exactly what we saw here, exactly by a wick right down to the six five. So you know. Really, this is almost a textbook bounce, textbook double bottom, if you believe in double bottoms, and I know that's sometimes controversial. Nonetheless, it's a textbook bounce right on top of the golden pocket. That's not controversial. That's just fact. And if we do continue back to the upside, guys, you could certainly make a case that, yeah, we, we, we just double bottomed right off the golden pocket and are now continuing up. Now, that being said, there is so much manipulation in this market that yes, you know, could this be being painted so we see exactly that and everybody gets in and starts going along? Yes. So it's uh, until, as I said, until we see a major move up or down on major volume, be very, very careful, guys. Be very, very careful um, with what you do. So right now, how am I playing this? Yes, small little scalp trades here and there. I told you yesterday that I was looking for that move up to 10. I didn't play it because I didn't have the conviction. And I also, with, with family guys, I haven't been trading really much over the last 24 hours at all. Um, but uh, but how am I going to play it right now? Yes, if we get, probably if we get a four-hour open and close above about 10,150, I will try to scalp up to about uh, probably at least 10,450, which means I'll get out at about 10,400, probably uh, 10,395 ish. Because remember, guys, you never want to get exactly on your round number. You always want to make sure you get your, 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 uh, you, you can take your profits and get your orders filled both in and out. To the downside, if we do end up breaking below that ascending support line, or excuse me, if, I, if we end up rejecting off of the ascending support line, or excuse me, resistance line. Sorry, guys. Again, didn't get much sleep last night. This line, massive line here, that what was support that is to, that turned into resistance, and actually it was turning into resistance, I believe, right? There we go. Um, that turned into resistance that wicked off it quite a few times here. If that if that is in fact the case, if that's what ha what happens, if we reject hard off of here, um, then of course I'm going to be looking for that drop back down to 9400. We'll have to wait and see how it plays out. But if we can close above this ascending, um, what was acting as resistance, if it starts acting as support again, comes back down and starts acting as support. I, yes, I'll be tempted to very likely take a shot again and try to front run that move up to about uh, 10,400, 10,450-ish, somewhere thereabouts. We'll have to wait and see kind of how it plays out and if we if we get that break on volume. Um, but I'm very, very reluctant, guys. More, I think the best thing to do is to sit back, relax, just watch, get the popcorn out, enjoy the show, and wait and see how this all ends up shaking out because it all does reek of manipulation. Volume is very, very low. This is all very suspect. Until we get a move in either direction with volume, it's going to remain very suspect. All right, guys, I know that's not what you want to hear, but uh, hey, maybe this is not the channel for you if you want someone to tell you to buy or sell. Um, just uh, This is just me being completely honest with you, telling you what I'm doing, and if it helps you, great, and if not, yeah, of course, you're welcome to watch any other channel you want, guys, but uh, just want to make sure I'm being 100% honest with you guys, and I'm never going to give you any uh, you know, any BS. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap you there. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, please let me know in the comment section below. As always, guys, please remember to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Until next time, guys, please trade safe, take care of yourselves. This is working. signing out.